In this episode, Biff Klein takes on Ray Elson. Biff Klein had a colorful background. He was a star football player, a Vietnam War veteran, a police officer, and later a nightclub bouncer. Uh, his opponent here is Ray Elson, who was an oddity himself, in that he was a powerlifter that transitioned into boxing. He broke New York State powerlifting records before making the leap to the ring. Uh, ironically here, though, uh, it is Klein that looks more like a weightlifter here than, than Elson. Uh, Klein was a fitness buff prior to getting to boxing himself. Now, this is a fight that was part of the scandalous United States Championship Tournament promoted by Don King, and the controversy occurs after the bout, as it is revealed that there were three fights on Klein's record that never took place. Uh, it turned out that his manager padded his record and submitted the results of these bouts to Ring Magazine in order to get him rated and included in this tournament. But the scandal is an injustice to Klein, as uh, some journalists had labeled him as an unskilled club fighter. Now, you watch this, you'll see he has some ability, and he definitely had some power. So this is a seldom seen seesaw battle, and I hope you enjoy. I've seen him fight before against Victor Galindez in May of 75 in Las Vegas. The opponent is Biff Klein. A tough, rugged youngster who's had 13 fights, won all 13, won all 13 by knockout. Elson has had 16 fights. He's 14, 1 and 1 with 9 knockouts. We look for a slugfest. The bell rings. The action begins. Harold Vallon, the veteran referee, is the third man in the ring. Scoring on a rounds basis quickly. Klein goes on the offensive. Fifth Klein in the blue. Blue trunks. Elson leaning against the ropes in the red trunks. It's a huge ring. 22 feet square. Lots of room to move. Mandatory eight count, of course, in effect. The three knockdown rule in effect. The bell will not save you, except, of course, if the bell comes after the final scheduled eighth round. That is a scheduled eighth round. Professional boxing, second quarter final round of the U.S. Boxing Championship Series. Halsey Fieldhouse Naval Academy. Elson Strong. Klein Strong. Elson with slightly more experience. Elson, a thoroughly articulate young man. A youngster who wrote into the Sunday Times this very day in New York City, expressing almost eloquently his views of the motion picture Rocky, the character of Rocky, and his views of what the modern-day fighter really is like. Good left by Klein. First round action. George Foreman here with me at ringside. George, remember Elson against Victor Galindez. Right, what you saw was a slug fist fight throughout the whole fight. So I think we're gonna, we can expect the same thing here. Klein has a resemblance to a weightlifter. You can see if he hits with anything, it's gonna hurt. Look at Elson going to the belly, George. He's up against one powerful fighter. How was the name of this show? These are light heavyweights. Elson, Ray Elson, the red trunks. Fifth line in the blue. Fighters scored on a rounds basis. Good left lead by Klein. Cut between Elson's gloves. Hurt him. Elson back against the ropes. Elson going to the midsection. Wanting to do two things. Slow Klein down. 
and two, bring his hands down, his defense down. Gelson's eyes was blurred a bit that time. Good fight by Klein, George. Klein scoring more effectively thus far in the first round as you look at the lower right-hand corner of your screen, the countdown caught the end of the first round, which time we'll be going to a commercial break. at Holt C. Fieldhouse at the United States Naval Academy awaiting the start of round two. Light heavyweight, second quarterfinal round, the United States Boxing Championship Series. Ray Elson, red trunks, quickly off with the left lead. Biff Klein in the blue trunks. First round, Klein scored effectively. Indeed, may have blurred the vision in Elson's left eye. Right there, you saw Klein get in a good left. Elson's task to get inside of that left. He was seeking to go to the midsection in round one. Again, that left and left hook to the belly, followed by a right. Then he moves upward. Now Klein covering. The body punch is all hurting Klein, I must say. Klein himself with a good right to the stomach. Elson right back with a left to the stomach. There an attempted right, picked off by Elson's gloves. Biff Klein, a strongly built kid, as George Foreman suggested in the first round, has the look of a weightlifter about him. He doesn't take a good body punch, as would else. Fifth jail. Very. Again, the Klein jab got in. Straight, purposeful, sharp. Again, a good left by Klein. Another left. That left is getting in there. round action. Harold Ballin, the referee. Crowd growing more enthusiastic. Elson pinioned against the ropes. Klein pummeling. Oh, no, no. Slip, slip. Referee Ballin was right on it. Called it a slip immediately, but Elson getting off his own barrage. Fought his way off the ropes, pursuing Klein. Now he's got Klein hurt. He's got him hurt, George. Lefts and rights to the head, then down to the midsection. A veritable flurry of blows. One on top of another. Strong fighting. Blood pouring out of the nostrils now of Biff Klein. Suddenly, Elson takes over the whole tempo of the fight. Anything can happen at this point. They're both landing good, solid punches. One's taking a good beating, but he has the power to change it at any time. He's in the corner. Klein is in his corner, right above us. Or in the corner. Elson still flailing away. Question will arise as he punched himself out, or will he? If not up till this point, will he? They're counting down to the end of the second round. Klein is just above us. Actually, it's Elson's corner. And he's finally away from the ropes. The blood is pouring down right above us and right on the ring apron in front of us. The referee will really be looking at that nose, please. That's the end of the round, and we're going to follow Biff Klein to his corner. The referee is a seasoned one, Harold Ballin. Once involved in a great controversy, he was the referee and the only scorer in the Ellis Patterson bout, which we did on September 15th in Stockholm, Sweden, back in 1968. But he came off of that controversy a winner because in the long run, he went back to refereeing, and he has been one of the very best. He did a fine job on that night at the Nassau Memorial Coliseum. Look at the blood as they work on Klein's nose. Last June 15th, when George Foreman forced Joe Frazier into retirement. I thought he did a good job that night. There's Elson, who made a strong comeback in the second round. Klein seemed to have the first round edge. In the second round, Klein was scoring effectively with the left jab, with an occasional right. Suddenly, pinioned against the ropes and getting pummeled, Elson fought his way off. Klein slip, that's all it was, a slip for a moment. Elson pursued, bang. Elson ripped them all over the ring. These are light heavyweights, the beginning of action in round three and the kind of slug pass that we anticipate. Klein coming back, throwing strong right. Elson 
Thompson in the same position against the ropes that he was in early in the second round when he fought his way out of it. You won't see any quit in this kid climb. They stopped the nosebleed. They worked it over well between rounds. A right lead by Elson got in. This is the fight that demands a good corner man. You have to have someone in there to stop that bleeding and tell you what shot the man is most apt to get caught with. Wild swingers. Blood again coming off of fly. Sometimes the fight seems frantic. Look at that. Now it goes to Dalton again. He got hurt, so he fights furiously, and suddenly he hurts Ray Elson. Back and forth it goes. A reminder in its own way of that crazy battle, or so it seemed, between Leon Spinks and Sisto Soria in the same light heavyweight classification in Montreal in the Olympic finals. Klein with the uppercuts. Klein with a good uppercut getting in to Elson's face. Right under the nose. Klein. Elson, the body bobbing and weaving. But basically he was against the ropes. Now fought his way off them. He goes after Klein. First it's one and then the other. Fallon breaking them up. As I said earlier, you're going to see some determination here that you've never seen before. This is third round, light heavyweight action. Ray Elson, the red trunks, fifth line, the blue. Good right gotten in by Elson. Back with a good right of Klein's. Klein again with a right up to Elson's head. Elson being forced to cover. Now back against the ropes, right above us. Wow. Each man mauling, brawling, pummeling the other. There goes another Elson flurry. Some to the midsection, some picked off by the Klein gloves, others getting in. Then upward to the head by Elson. Klein right back, good jarring right jaw. You're not gonna see that kind of power in the light heavyweight every day. This is power. We're counting down to the end of round three, at which time we will be having a commercial break. Wild action here. You know me, they still remember me as a senator in Washington. Round four, action begins. Light heavyweight classification. Ray Elson, Ray Trunks, fifth line blue. The first three rounds. Mauling, pummeling, power hitting. Action, lots of it, all the way through. Referee Harold Ballin warned the manager of fifth line that if he keeps jumping up on the ring apron during the round, he will disqualify the fighter. So it's a more sober-minded manager trainer in the corner now of fifth line. Line with a good left after an Elson combination. Oh, Elson hurt him. Elson hurt Klein. Klein was falling forward. He gathered himself together and stood upright. Elson with a wild missing swing there, but he began the last flurry with two blows, a left and a right to the belly, then moved up. Now he's got Klein again, a right, a left, another right. He's all over Klein, pummeling. Oh Klein has power, he'll be back. This fight is nowhere near the end. George Foreman, his prediction as to fifth line, fourth round action. One punch by Klein can change the whole thing, Let's as you just see. Elson getting in a good left. Elson with a good right lead. Klein staying upright. George Foreman saying, coming off the ropes right into an Elson left. George Foreman saying Klein will not go down, that this will still be a fight. It's a scheduled eight round. Elson completely dominant in this round. And now, in comes, in comes Klein's man. In effect, throwing in the towel, stopping the fight, protecting Biff Klein. So, in a most unusual and unorthodox way, this fight is over. Biff Klein, gamely, stubbornly, never went down. But from that moment, in the second round, when Ray Elson caught off the ropes, pursued Klein, he dominated the bout. He 
is right above us. This is the young man who articulated so beautifully in today's New York Times his feelings as a fighter after seeing the hit film Rocky. His basic point is that the fighters of today are not the fighters of the past, that they are not caricatures, that many of them are educated men. We'll return in 60 seconds with more of the United States Boxing Championships after this from our local stations, Ray Elson has defeated Biff Klein. In Elson's next fight, he would be knocked out by Michael Spinks in 51 seconds, and later stopped by another future light heavyweight champion in Eddie Mustafa Muhammad in only two rounds, and he would retire only a few months later. Biff Klein would last another two years himself in the sport, and like Elson, be stopped by future light heavyweight champion Dwight Muhammad Kwawi in only one round. Klein would later claim that he was drugged during the fight, and he would suffer a detached retina and become blind in his left eye. Now, by all accounts, he was a super nice guy, and he would fall on tough times, and he would suffer from pugilistic dementia, and he would die at the age of 72 in a care home. So I hope you like this look back at boxing history. That's it for this episode. Be sure and check out my boxing books in the description box below.